righty, let's uh, hear it for the band. As always, they never disappoint. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the uh, 909 this morning. I want to thank uh, Jerry for uh, back there doing our te technical uh, situation this morning. And the uh, kitchen staff, thanks again back there for all the great breakfast. Let's hear it for them. I always like to start off with uh, Psalms 909. God's a safe house for the battered, a sanctuary during bad times. The moment you arrive, you relax, and you're never sorry you're not. Our 909. Welcome again this morning. Just want to remind everyone, uh, prayer slips are on the back there for our prayer requests, so grab those and prepare for those now. We'll have prayer, prayer concerns in a few minutes. Let's just don't hesitate. Let's uh, stand up and let's uh, hear the band, and let's sing Just Over in the Glory Land. All right. <clears throat> I've a home prepared where the saints abide, just so in the glory land. And I long to be by my Savior's side, just so in the glory just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land There with the mighty host I'll stand Just over in the glory land I am on Just over in the glory land Here to sing God's praise and His glory share Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land There the happy angel band Just over in the glory land Just over Trial, you will cross the 
bridge of strife See that Christ is your conductor On the lightning train of life Always mindful of obstruction Do your duty, never fear Keep your hand upon the throttle And your right on the rail Blessed Savior, thou will guide us Till we reach that blissful shore Where the angels wait to join us And I pray forevermore You will often find obstruction Look for storm, the wind and wind On a field or curb or trestle It will almost hit your train Put your trust alone in Jesus Never falter, never Keep your hand upon the throttle and your right on the rail. Blessed Savior, now we'll guide us till we reach that blissful shore where the angels wait to join us. And I pray forevermore. One more. As you roll up, don't the trust so. Man in Jordan, swelling tide. You behold the Union Depot, into which your train must glide. There's you the superintendent, God the Father, God the Son. With a heart in joy, it's plotted. We'll be pilgrim, we'll come. Blessed Savior, thou will guide us till we reach that whistle shore. Hear the angels wait to join us in thy dream forevermore. All right, amen. Woo. That was awesome. Got some energy now after that. I know Lee. Could you need one a break. more verse, you think? One more verse? One more verse. Okay. <laughs> Tough. That's awesome. All righty. Uh, birthdays and anniversaries. Uh, ministry note here. Uh, this is our ministry minute. Uh, it's a new feature of our joy time to highlight some of our many outreach programs. Uh, prayer bears. Uh, do you know? Here we go. Um, you know that we have prayer prayers placed around the church. If you didn't know that, if someone who could use a reminder of prayers for them, uh, feel free to uh, hand deliver one. It's one of our new features for the ministry minute. See, I miss birthdays here. I'm sorry. I'm slow. Who would I miss up there, Jerry? Go back. It's all right. Birthdays. Here we go. Keenan Wayne. Nancy, Emily, John, and Keith, and Mary, anyone here today so we can sing happy birthday? Don't be shy. Wow. Nobody? Okay. Oh, darn it. Okay. What is it? Okay. Yeah, let's do that. What? Yeah. Back there. Can, can, Wait, what, did you turn, can. what did you say? You turned 14? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. Let's see. No, no anniversaries. This, I hear there's no anniversaries. Anyone pop in that we don't know about it might be having an anniversary. Here? Happy anniversary. Are they here? Oh, they're here. Okay. Who is it? Keith and Janice Hall. Well, Chip well, 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 well. Ramsey. Well. You know this one? I had no anniversaries, but I guess we do. We got one for you here. Okay. Happy anniversary. May your hearts forever be. Filled with love and unity, happy anniversary. Awesome. All right. I love it. Right. Awesome. That is great. All right. Good for you. All right. Slideshow here. Cool. There you go. 
I already did the bears. We have that around. There we go. Up oh, here we go. From Jerry Crow, we know all know what this is. Obviously, a blue jay. Very beautiful picture from Jerry. Blue bird. Blue bird. Blue jay. Uh oh. Sorry. It's early. Let's move on to the next slide with Elizabeth Gordon with a family picture of the Gordons. There we go. Very nice. Beautiful. Thank you, Elizabeth. Bob Wilson always comes through. Boy, that is a, a Caspian turn. Beautiful. How he gets these pictures, I'll never know. Wow. Wow. Professional photographer here. Skimmers. A barred yellow butterfly. Wow. Very beautiful. It will soon be spring in 30 days. Wow. 30 days from today, spring will officially be here, so not too far along coming up. So just a reminder, uh, our giving, we can always give through our uh, P.O. Box, online giving. We can do it in person. So at this time, we ask that it is time to give our gifts back to God. We offer that you open your hearts as we, in the spirit of giving, as we uh, pass our offering plates around and enjoy the music. <laughs> Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we ask you this morning to help guide us to use these gifts that have been given this morning to serve your kingdom. Help us be faithful receivers and givers of your gifts. We offer these gifts to you in response to the blessings we have been given. Bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, the prayer request, we ask... Uh, it's time to bring your prayer request to the uh, cross. Just remember, prayer requests are answered every day, every minute of the day. So don't hesitate to bring those. Church, we'll pray for those throughout the week in any way we can. Bring those at this time. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you this morning once again asking for your blessing and help us as we're gathered here together. We ask that you show us how to conduct your work with a spirit of joy through this week. Help us challenge each other to be the best we can for you. In God's name, amen. At this time, we ask that you work us do the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. This time we're going to sing Heavenly Sunlight. Stay, stand, please. Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountains through the deep vale. Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee. Promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing his praises, Jesus is mine. Shadows around me, shadows above me, never conceal my Savior and I. He is a light, in him is no darkness, Ever I'm walking close to his side. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing his praises. Jesus is mine. In the bright sunlight, ever rejoicing, pressing my way to mansions above. Singing his praises, gladly I'm walking, walking in sunlight, sunlight of love. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing my praises, Jesus is mine. Amen. You may be seated. Today's scripture reading is from Mark 1, 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved, and with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days. Tempted by Satan, he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Kevin. Well, good morning and greetings on this uh, first Sunday in the season of Lent. Glad to have you all as we gather in this very special season in the life of the church. This is a season where we engage in spiritual disciplines. It's a season where we try to prepare our hearts and minds, our lives for the celebration of Easter. This 40-day period, not counting Sundays, is a very significant part of our Christian experience, a very significant part of our Christian worship. And so after this past Wednesday, Ash Wednesday's service, we have now embarked on this 40-day period of time. It's It's a season, it's a time of some spiritual reckoning. It's a time of introspection. It really is modeled on this story of Jesus' 40 days of temptation in the wilderness. Uh, In some degree, we might say that the season of Lent is an opportunity for us to struggle with our own inner darkness, a time to struggle with our own inner demons, if you will, a time to recognize there are those things in our lives that can be barriers to our following Jesus faithfully. So this season has a kind of a somber tone to it. A lot of people give up stuff during Lent, right? Maybe you do that. 
Uh, I often say that I gave up liver many years ago for Lent, and I'm so pious I haven't touched the piece of liver <laughs> since. <laughs> Whatever your practices are, and I'm going to talk in just a little bit about some of the things we're offering here in the life of the church here at Highlands United Methodist Church that we hope you'll consider as we try to think about how we can encourage one another and help one another along our spiritual journey. As a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and just name some of the things. I mentioned that we started with Ash Wednesday. Christine preached our Ash Wednesday service. We had the imposition of ashes on our foreheads, those of you who were here. We started that journey on Wednesday. And we have some other things that are coming up that I just want to I want to name before you. I want to be sure that you're familiar with. Beginning today, actually, this afternoon at 3 o'clock, we're starting a 30-week study called Christian Believer, Knowing God with Mind and Heart. Those of you who have done disciple Bible studies before, it's the same kind of format. Meredith and Jan will be leading that study. It's orientation today. Even if you haven't signed up, you're certainly welcome to show up this afternoon at 3 o'clock, and we'll be sure we get a book to you if it's something you'd be willing to explore. Again, that begins this afternoon at 3. They'll meet in the Old Fellowship Hall at 3 o'clock this afternoon, and we would invite you to give some prayerful thought to that. Even if you're not sure it might be what you're looking for, I invite you to come to orientation and see what you think after spending some time there today. Also coming up next week, Dr. Mike Cordell is going to be leading a Sunday school class during the season of Lent, a short-term Sunday school class. If you don't already have a Sunday school class, I would invite you to give some thought to being a part of this class that will meet next week, beginning next week, in the parlor. It's going to be around the book uh, called No Pat Answers, Looking Squarely at Life's Most Difficult Questions. You'll see a note about that in the bulletin as well. If you've ever struggled with faith, if you've ever had those questions that gnaw at you, if you've ever recognized that life is often filled with more questions than answers, uh, this might be a class you'd want to spend some time with. Dr. Mike will lead that again beginning next week and books will be uh, provided. During our Wednesday night programs this season of Lent, we'll be doing special things around spiritual disciplines. Uh, in fact, uh, we'll begin this Wednesday night. Bob Hood, one of our adult Sunday school class leaders, will be uh, leading us in a conversation around fasting. And so that will be, uh, that'll be one of the spiritual disciplines we'll be spending some time talking about. We have other folks who will be leading throughout the season of Lent, Christine and I, also Steve Bruner, another one of our adult Sunday school class leaders. And then uh, the, the last thing I'll just note in this sort of uh, commercial, if you will, this Lenten commercial at the beginning, um, I'm looking to start a small group spiritual direction gathering that uh, will meet during the season of Lent. I'm actually in a spiritual direction certification program right now. And one of the things I'm very interested in is the idea of group spiritual direction. So we're going to play with that a little bit during the season of Lent. If you'd be interested in exploring that along with me, look at our HUMC news this week. I'll have more information on that. We want to be very intentional here in the life of the church in providing opportunities for all of us to observe a holy Lent. We're trying to look at this season in a way that helps all of us kind of think a little more intentionally about what does it mean to answer Jesus' call to be self-denying, cross-carrying Jesus followers. And so we want to take advantage of this season of preparation for Easter, this season of Lent in the life of the church. On the first Sunday in the season of Lent, we always, if we follow the revised common lectionary suggested gospel lesson, we always look at this story of the temptations of Jesus in the wilderness. And I don't know if you noticed or not, but when Kevin read the account from Mark that comes up every three years in the ABC rotation in the Revised Common Lectionary, Mark doesn't tell us what those temptations are. All Mark gives us is that Jesus was in the wilderness 40 days tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him, the end. We don't know the dialogue. We don't know the questions. Matthew and Luke give us some idea, right? We, if we turn to Matthew and Luke, we would hear things like uh, Satan saying, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from the temple. If you are the Son of God, uh, turn these stones into bread. Uh, I will give you all the kingdoms of the world if you will bow down and worship me. Those things may sound familiar to you. You got that from Matthew or Luke. And we don't hear Jesus reply with things like, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We don't hear Jesus say again, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. We don't hear Jesus say, away with you, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Mark doesn't give us any of that. I don't know 
why Mark gave us such limited information. Maybe Mark hadn't heard that part of the story. Maybe Mark didn't feel like we needed to know that part of the story. Maybe Mark's a little bit like me in that I'm reluctant sometimes to start listing sins when I'm preaching because I'm afraid I'll leave yours out. <laughs> Mark has a very uh, just-the-facts, ma'am, Joe Friday approach to the way he writes his gospel. If you ever spend some time in the gospel of Mark, you know, it's just very terse. It's very brief. He doesn't give us a lot of extra details. And for whatever reason uh, today, he doesn't give us very much. In fact, it's really fascinating how much Mark puts into seven verses. In these just seven verses that Kevin read for you so well just a few minutes ago, we have uh, Jesus' baptism. We have Jesus being driven out into the wilderness by the Spirit. We have the temptations. We have the arrest of John. We have Jesus beginning his Galilean ministry saying, repent and believe in the good news. All of that happens in just seven little verses in the gospel of John. And if Mark's gospel were all we had, we didn't have Matthew and Luke regarding this story, we would just be left to our imagination. And we'd just be left to wonder what kind of temptations Jesus would have heard in the wilderness. The framers of the Revised Common Lectionary, the suggested gospel lesson for today wasn't just the 40 days temptation from Mark. No, what you heard Kevin read to us a few minutes ago was, again, the baptism, the temptations, the arrest of John, and the beginning of Jesus' Galilean ministry, the proclamation of the kingdom of God. As I think about those verses all together, as I, as I think about my own temptation to, to take just the 40 days temptations out and just focus primarily only on that, um, I recognize there's value in hearing all of it together, the baptism, the temptations, the proclamation of the good news of the kingdom of God that had come, had come in Jesus. I, I, I kind of want to think that maybe Mark wants us to hear all of that together. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I like to think that maybe Mark wanted us to hear, wanted us to think about the baptism and the temptations and the proclamation of the good news of the gospel, the coming of the kingdom of God all together. Maybe, maybe Mark didn't want us to linger so much on the temptations. Maybe Mark didn't want us to see that story so much in isolation. Maybe Mark wanted us to think about what it might have been like for Jesus going into the wilderness, being tempted by Satan. We don't hear his voice. We don't hear Satan's voice in Mark's rendition. We do hear, in fact, there's only one voice we hear in this text, if you call it. It was the voice that came from heaven that said to Jesus, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. That's what he heard after the baptism. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And I can't help but wonder, I can't help but wonder if Mark wants us to be sure we hear that too. As Jesus goes into the wilderness, again, we don't, from Mark's perspective, we don't get the dialogue, we don't get the temptations, we don't hear the voice of the deceiver, but we still have resonating in our minds the voice of God from heaven to Jesus. And I want to think that maybe that was the predominant voice that Jesus remembered in the wilderness. I don't know if you know much about the wilderness. Shoot, you do know about the wilderness. I know you do. You know about the wilderness. You know about that place where your faith is challenged. You know about that place <clears throat> where the questions come quicker than the answers. You know about that place where the prayers don't reach the ceiling. You know about that place where you feel broken and beaten down. You know about that place where the sand shifts below your feet. You don't know where you are anymore. You don't know what you think. You don't know what you believe. You know what it's like to have your faith challenged. You know something of the wilderness. When I hear this story, I'm kind of grateful for Mark to not give us too many details. I'm grateful that Mark tells his story in such a abbreviated, an abbreviated way that we can't help but hear the baptism and the words of the baptism and the proclamation all tied in together with this, this time of testing in the wilderness. I, one thing I know about the wilderness is that you can hear all kinds of voices in the wilderness. And the voices can tell you all kinds of things. Voices can make you doubt yourself, can make you, make you doubt your true identity. I want to believe, and I do believe, that 
whatever the voices were in the wilderness from Mark's perspective, from the deceiver to Jesus, the voice that he remembered was the one that came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. I love what Henry Nouwen, the beloved uh, Catholic priest and spiritual writer, once said, he talked about in his book, um, Life of the Beloved, he talked about how we should all try our best to hear that voice as spoken to us. That we should all hear God saying to us, you are my beloved child. For Nowen, that was a, a lifelong journey. Henry Nowen struggled a lot with doubt. He struggled a lot with his own identity. He struggled a lot with his own, his own personhood, his own faith. He struggled a lot with his own inner demons, if you will. And I think most of us know what that's like, right? He struggled to hear that voice, you are my child, the beloved. And I think he offers a, a good word for us. It's a good word to remember any time, any day of the year. It's a good word to remember during the season of Lent. It's a good time, a good word to remember, especially when we do find ourselves in the wilderness, because the wilderness can just do a number on us. I've often said to you before, I don't think when I stand up before you to preach, and by the way, I am honored that you let me stand before you and preach because I know I am asking a lot of you to give me some attention for a few minutes when there's other things you could be doing and there's other places your mind could be going. I know, you may be gone there now, I understand. <laughs> I get it. I've sat where you sit. I understand how it works. But when I stand before you to preach and when you give me the opportunity to, to offer what I believe is the good news that, uh, that, that I hope that you will hear in some way that's of some value to your own faith journey. When you allow me, when you give me that level of trust, I, am, I honor that and I respect that. And I've often said to you before, I don't think before, when I stand before you, I don't really tell you anything you don't know. I doubt if there have been very few aha moments in my 33 years of preaching when I've said something and Somebody would say, oh my gosh, I've never thought of that before. I doubt there's been very few, I suspect there's been very few of those moments. What I think I do more than anything else is remind you of things you already know, but you've forgotten. Because here's what I know about the wilderness. <laughs> it can make you forget things you know. So my work is reminding. Maybe my work is to try to help you hear again that voice that can sometimes be drowned out by the voices in the wilderness. That voice that says to you, you are my beloved child. Because I don't know about you, but I don't always feel so beloved. And I bet I'm not the only one in the room. I bet you know what it's like. This story, I think, for me, is a story about identity. It's about Jesus knowing who he was. If you read the accounts in Matthew and Luke, you get the idea that that, that Satan was continually, from Matthew and Luke's perspective, trying to challenge Jesus' identity, if you are the Son of God. And Mark doesn't give us that, but Mark makes it clear that Jesus knew before he went into the wilderness who he was. He was God's beloved Son in whom God was well pleased. And I can't help but believe that whatever Satan threw at him in the wilderness, from Mark's perspective, Jesus remembered that. He was God's beloved child. In the wilderness, sometimes we can forget that voice, and I've just come today to remind you of that voice, especially in case the, the wilderness voices are kind of beating you down just now, and you're not quite sure what you believe at the moment. The season of Lent invites us to ask deep questions of our faith. It invites us also to reorient our identity if we have forgotten who we are. That's what I've come to do this morning is to remind you who you are. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great to hear the echo of the voice from heaven resounding in our minds and in our hearts as we trudge through the wilderness? Whenever our identity comes into question, wouldn't it be great to hear that voice? You are my child, my beloved child. Wouldn't it be helpful to remember in the hard times when challenges come our way, when faith is hard, wouldn't it be helpful to remember who we are? I've simply come to remind you who you are. Beloved children of God today. Mark didn't give us too many details about Jesus' temptations, but I think Mark wanted us to understand that Jesus was clear about who he was when he went into the wilderness. And because he was clear about who he was, he could handle whatever Satan threw his way. 
if we can remember who we are, if we can stand firm in the fullness of who we have been created to be, in the image of God and for whom Christ died, and that's not just us, but that's others as well. If we could live in the fullness of our identity and encourage others to live in the fullness of their identity as children of God for whom Christ died, we might not only find our way in the wilderness, but we might help others find their way too. I had an opportunity uh, over these past couple of weeks to be in a play in uh, the Martin Linscombe Theater called Love Letters. Some of you saw it. It's a delightful little play. It was kind of strange in that it was just two people on stage reading letters back and forth. And uh, it was really a sweet play in, in a lot of ways. Uh, at the end of the play, there is this kind of poignant moment where the female lead in the play dies and the male character in the story who was me in this play kind of finishes up reading a letter while the female character comes back on stage. And I said to Kathy after our first week, <clears throat> I said, you know, I don't, I don't know where Julie is. Julie was the, the lady playing the other role. I said, I don't know where Julie is, but when she comes back in at the end of the play, it sounds like she's just right in my ear. I don't know where she is because I, I can't see her. I never look at her. I never see her till the play is over. And I was saying something to Julie before our second week in the play, and I said, you know, I don't know where you are, but it just sounds so lovely how close you are. And she said to me, she said, I'm sitting on the arm of your chair. I had no clue she was sitting on the arm of my chair while I was reading the last little bit in the play. And I thought that was so lovely, and I was so glad to know that. I'm so glad she told me that. And I'm sure it was kind of a cool thing for the audience to see. But I've thought about that a lot lately. Of course, you, you, you put a preacher on stage, and he starts to think theologically about everything, right? And so I was really reflecting on that later, and I thought, I had no idea how close, how close Julie was. I had no idea she was sitting on the arm of my chair. And I wondered... <clears throat> I wondered about that in, in light of faith. If you'll allow me to push the metaphor just a little bit, I, I wonder how many times the Spirit of the Lord is so close, closer than I even realize, maybe even closer than sitting on the arm of my chair. I want to think about those things, especially when I'm in the wilderness. I want to remember. I want to remember who I am in the wilderness. I want to remember the voice that is stronger than all the voices that sometimes can confuse me about who I am. And that's what I want for you, beloved. That's what I want for you today. That's what I want for you in this journey of the season of Lent. I want you to remember something that you know that maybe the wilderness has caused you to forget. Maybe the best thing we can do as we journey through the season of Lent is to be careful not to listen to those voices that will take us off track, not to listen to those voices that will question our identity, not those voices that would give us a false identity, but to listen as best we can to that voice that gives us our true and ultimate identity in Christ. I've simply come today to remind you. I've simply come today to invite you to listen to the right voice. I've simply come to tell you again, you are God's beloved child. I just want you to know that. And if you don't remember anything else about what the preacher said today, I hope you'll remember that, especially should you find yourself trying to grope your way through the wilderness. May God empower us so to hear and so to know and so to be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our final song is, Lee, help me. Unclouded Day. Unclouded Day. I invite you to stand as you are able. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the sky And they tell me of a home far away Oh, 
they chill me over home where no storm clouds ride. band. Kevin, thank you for leading us this morning. Thanks to the band. Thank you for being here. Those of you here physically, those of you worshiping with us at home, I invite you to look to me for your benediction coming from the book of Colossians in the New Testaments. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And in gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. Go in peace. Let's fly away. Some glad morning when this life is over I fly away Got the lesser shore, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. When the shadows of this life is wrong, will I fly away? Like a bird from prison bars is flown, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh boy, I'll fly away. When I die, I do you by and by, I'll fly away. Till just a few more weary days and then I'll away to a land where joy shall never end. I'll fly away. I'll fly away. Oh, glory. I'll fly away. 
Bye and bye.